Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a great week. So it's been a while since I have come on screen <laughs> to say hi. I tend to prefer painting um, and not putting the spotlight on me or on my face, if you will. Um, but I do think it's important once in a while to stop in and say hi just so people know who I am, I guess. Um, and I also, when I do this, like to take the time to thank you all for making the time to watch my videos, for being so encouraging and kind, and um, for connecting with me in the comments section. I really enjoy that part of being on YouTube. And I think we are really building a wonderful little community here. On the subject of our creative community, I want to do a shout out to Bettina Fernandez. She was kind enough to mention my channel on her channel uh, a little while back and someone, uh, one of you out there, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly who it was who mentioned Bettina, but uh, I was so thankful that she was mentioned to me. I had a chance to go check out her channel and it's a really neat channel. She does some really cool stuff with neurographic art and watercolors and uh, she's got a cool artistic style. And if you haven't had a chance to check out her channel, I would really encourage you to do so. I think she's got a lot to contribute and I really enjoy her channel. So I hope you'll get a chance to discover her as well. This week I am also going to be working on some neurographic art myself and as a reminder when I do neurographic art I tend to do it in my own way. It's not exactly like it is prescribed um, by professionals who use it for therapy. I do it in my own way and I like to do it in my own way without having to really um, subscribe to following rules or anything like that because for me when there are too many rules in the creative process it, it becomes less relaxing and less fun for me so this is a time right now for me where my studio is not packed up just yet but we are gonna be moving very shortly and there's a lot of stress involved with a move as I'm sure you all know if you've moved ever in your life um, so I felt like it was important for me to try and do something a little bit zen and relaxing and since I haven't done a neurographic art piece in a little while I thought it'd be fun to do it for that reason also. I'm gonna be doing it using my paper towels that I always clean my brushes on and uh, I did a painting for a video a couple of weeks ago using the paper towels that I save after I clean my brushes and I really love using these for backgrounds for paintings because it's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> the paper towel is there. I can just stick it onto a substrate and there you go. I have a background already made for me. And I mean, is there an easier way to create a background? I don't think so. <laughs> so with all of that said, Again, thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, my channel has grown tremendously over the past year and I'm super excited about that and I'm excited to see what else is possible on the horizon. There's a whole bunch I'm exploring and once I'm in my new space, hopefully we can calm things down for <laughs> at least a few years and then I'll have more time to create more fun, classes and I'm even thinking at some point of making um, a live stream. I don't know what that would look like. I'm not even 100% sure that I'd be comfortable with that but I would love to have a chance to connect with you live. So these are things that are sort of brewing in my mind so we'll see. So anyway without any further ado thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy the video. For my project this week, I've decided to work on a piece of 10 by 10 inch cradle board that I have previously gessoed. And now I'm simply going to separate my paper towel and I'm going to adhere it to the gesso board. To do that, I'm going to be using some fluid matte medium 
and I'm spreading it out just using an old plastic card and um, one thing I did notice when I was sticking the paper towel onto the board is that it has a tendency to lift. I don't know if it's because the board is a little bit more porous and the matte medium being fluid. It, it was sticking but it wasn't sticking as well as my previous uh, paper towel project did using the heavy gel medium. So what I decided to do was apply some of the fluid matte medium on top of my paper towel using the credit card again spread to just to make sure it completely absorbs through the paper towel and that it all sticks to the board. Now I'm not 100% sure since I have never done this specifically before with watercolors. I'm not sure how the watercolors are going to then adhere to the paper towel once everything is dry but it's worth a try and uh, we'll see how it goes. Once this is fully dry, I will cut off the excess paper towel that is not stuck to the cradle board using a utility knife and then I'll be ready to start my painting process. Since I love circles so much, most of my neurographic art projects typically involve some circles and this one's going to be no different. So I pulled out my compass and I'm drawing out a few circles using the compass and I may also use the circle guide to create a few more smaller ones. Since I used matte medium to adhere my paper towel to my cradle board, I'm hoping that the surface of my substrate is still gritty and porous enough that my watercolors will adhere to the surface, but I'm not 100% sure. If for whatever reason it didn't really work out, then I would probably choose to pull out my acrylic paints. but. Just as I'm applying the water on the surface right now, it does feel like the paper towel is still um, at least a little bit absorbent. So I think it's going to work really well with the watercolors as well. I want to make the circles that I've painted on my substrate stand out and so in order for them to do that I'm going to use a darker color and paint around the circles and the color I'm using is one of my favorites from this little palette here it's called the Decadent Pies um, Watercolor Confections palette by Prima and um, the color is called Blackberry and it's a color I really really love and it's a beautiful dark blue that I've used in a lot of paintings and I kind of have it in my mind that my little neurographic piece will be I guess reminiscent of the universe and planets dancing in the universe and uh, I think using the navy blue will help to create the darkness in the space between the planets and just the having the colors show through um, the clear watercolor paint wash that I'm putting on the surface I think will also add a little feel of um, just being out in the universe traveling among the planets. I watch a lot of documentaries on the universe, on planets, and on nature in general. These are some of my favorite things to do when I have some downtime. And so 
it's not surprising to me that this is often a source of inspiration for me, especially with neurographic art. I really love the texture of the paper towels and how it um, helps to create some really interesting marks in a painting. But one thing to keep in mind is not to use your most expensive vest markers for working on top of them. Kind of like watercolor paper, the surface is more textured and it will probably wreak havoc on your expensive felt tip pens in particular so I would really be careful about using those on top of here. I use this zig marker with on watercolor paper all the time and I've sort of dedicated it to working on rougher surfaces so it's already not in wonderful shape and I'm not too concerned about using it on this surface right now. I also like this marker because it's got a dual tip so on one side it's a bit thicker, on the, on, the, on the other side it's a bit thinner and it's one of my favorite markers to work with when creating neurographic art. So I'm using it here because I want to really again make my circles stand out from the background in um, the painting and adding that dark contrast of black in between the circle and the blackberry color in the background will really help do, to do that. Now I'm coming in with the finer end of my dual tip marker and I'm just delineating the areas where the lines are intersecting and creating some sharp corners so that I can round them off. I'm delineating it with the finer end of my marker and then I'll come in with my wider tip after the fact and I'll color all of those sections in. If this is your first time seeing neurographic art and you're having a hard time following what it is that I'm doing or what it is I mean when I say lines are intersecting and creating some sharp corners, I will leave a couple of links to some earlier videos that I created where I explain my process in much more detail. Now that I'm done working on my neurographic lines, I want to start focusing on my circles 
and I want to start brightening them up and turning this little piece into what I'm imagining in my head, those little planets dancing in the universe. And so to do this, I'll be adding some iridescent paint. I'll work, of course, with my some of my favorites, including Magic Green and Star Gold. And I'll also pull out my CSY Art Gallery Metallics because I think this painting could use a little pop of more bright color. This midnight blue is exactly what my painting needed to make the background a little bit more interesting. The dark matte background is really neat, especially since you can still see some of those colors peeping through the transparent blackberry. But I also wanted to add a layer of contrast using this metallic blue because the black and the, um, not the black, but the blackberry in the background is matte. And so having some contrast using a metallic color can make the painting a little bit more interesting and fun.
I've also decided to add some white dots in the black section of my painting so that they can mimic the appearance of distant stars. Using gesso for this is perfect. It's opaque and a dotting tool helps me to create easy dots. I could use a paintbrush for this, but I think on the rough surface of the paper towel, it might be a little bit harder to work with a brush to create these little dots and not have them look a little smushed. Even with me using the dotting tool, it is a little bit harder, not altogether hard, but a little bit harder to create dots that don't look um, like they're spreading. And that's only because the surface of the paper towel is a little bit textured and, and so it, it makes it harder to have an even application. But it is still very workable and very easy to work with. I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised at how well my watercolors were able to adhere to the fluid matte medium that is dried over the surface of my paper towel. And the paper towel still kept some of its uh, porous uh, nature and made it easy for me to work with my watercolors. So I am so happy that I have done this and I'm excited to have so many more backgrounds I can create with my paper towels. It's such a wonderful way for me to reuse things that have otherwise ended up in the trash can. And really, it would be very sad if they did end up in the trash can because I love those paper towels. The backgrounds they create are really, really beautiful. I'm not quite done adding color. I feel a need to add a little bit of Indian orange and some shiny crystal pink. I think it'll help um, bring out some of the colors that are a lot more subtle in the paper towel. If you look closer, you can, you can almost see them, but they're very, very subtle. So adding the Indian orange and the shiny crystal pink, I think will help to sort of bring everything together and it'll make the painting just a little bit more bright.
as I'm adding these final little dots of pink, I am ready to call this painting complete. And the fun thing is, after I have sprayed a fixative on it, it will be ready to hang on a wall. So I'm super happy about that as well. Once I was done with the painting itself, I also used my flat brush to paint the sides of my cradle board using some Payne's Gray acrylic paint. And I think that was the final step that really made the piece look complete. As I move in a little closer to look at the details in this painting, I really am so happy with how it all came together. I love the look of the textures of the paper towel and how it helped to make the paint blend in different ways where you can see little dots, I guess, of um, the paper towel's texture that are marking the painting in a different way. And I'm a lover of circles, so it's like having a painting covered with these tiny little dots or tiny little circles all over it and then complemented with the larger circles and the neurographic art on top well i must say my heart is swooning what do you think are you ready to create your own artwork using painted paper towels I hope at least this video gave you some food for thought and inspiration for your next creative project. Thank you for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!